Hello, here we are at the 10 Capital Studios at Watson. What we're going to do is take you inside and show you what it takes to put together our news each weeknight at 6. You'll meet some of the people you see each night and you'll also meet some of the people behind the scenes. We don't have long, so let's go. Okay, this is the studio where the news is broadcast from each weeknight, live at 6 o'clock. But we'll be back here in just a few minutes. We're on our way to the newsroom. Let's go. Jeremy Flynn, Chief of Staff. Yes, your role in the newsroom, what's that? Well, essentially, um, my role, I guess, is one of coordination. Starting at about 8 o'clock or earlier in the morning, when we come in and sift through all the press releases of the day and have a look at what the major issues are and essentially make a decision on what we're going to cover, then it's my role to make sure that that is coordinated throughout the day so that at 6 o'clock um, we have the best possible news bulletin we can possibly get for that day. OK, and that whiteboard over there shows all the stories that the uh, journalists are doing today. Yeah, that's basically uh, the hub of everything we do here, really. Um, as the stories are decided on, they quite simply go up on what we call our whiteboard, and it's a reference point for journalists and cameramen right throughout the day, up until 6 o'clock and beyond, if need be. OK, you mentioned press releases, uh, but where do the uh, local stories come from apart from that? Well, Greg, as, as well as press releases, we get uh, story ideas from everyone and anyone in the community who wants to give us a call when they think they have a story to offer. Um, it's then our task to have a look at the story and uh, weigh up whether it is worth covering that day. Um, obviously, the success of any newsroom uh, really revolves around the strength of our contacts in the community. And uh, that goes for everyone in the newsroom. If we don't have the contacts in the community, we're obviously not going to be able to get the best news stories on a day-in, day-out basis. Now, of course, we would probably deal with about 500 press releases or faxes every single day, and a certain amount of them we, uh, we just can't use. So they basically uh, go in there. Andrew Coombe, News Director and Executive Producer of 10 Capital News. What is a producer's role in a news service? A producer selects the stories that you see in your TV at night during the news. We select that from a, a number of uh, sources, local stories, national stories, international stories, and also sport. So the producer's role is to make sure we've got a, enough content for one hour of news. And what makes 10 Capitals News different to our competitors? Well, our advantage is that we can lead with the big story of the day, depending whether it's in Canberra, Sydney, London, anywhere. So no matter where the biggest story of the day happens, we can lead with it at 6 o'clock which is our main point of difference to our competitors. OK, now on the news each night, you see uh, the newsreader with a picture or a caption next to him. Uh, can you explain how those work and how you come to choose them? Yeah, they're called quarter frame graphics. They are made by a uh, graphic artist in a paint box. And the idea of those is to uh, give viewers an insight of what the, the, the story is about, give them a hint of what the upcoming story is about and a visual cue to what that story might be about. Now, Rob, uh, your role as a graphic artist, uh, you're given a lot of tasks every day about uh, you know, producing different graphics. If you're doing a story on, uh, say, Mal Meninga, you'd have to find a shot of Mal Meninga and, and, and put in the words that go with that? Yeah, yeah, we get the logos and get action shots and put behind people's heads and that. Yeah. Now, for instance, uh, in the news today, Hansi Cronje, the South African cricket captain, has been found guilty of, of bribery. Uh, you could make him look quite silly, couldn't you? Yeah, yeah, I could. He's been telling lies, apparently, so with a little Pinocchio nose, he wouldn't be very happy. Bit of a frown. Not a very happy chappy. <laughs> this is 10 Capital News with Greg Robson and Penelope Heath. A nationwide recall of Panadol after an extortion attempt. A 19-year-old charged with murdering a woman in Braddon. And 70 Canberra drivers a week being caught by speed cameras. Good evening. Also tonight, fighting breaks out in the Solomon Islands after the coup. 
Penny, what qualities do you need to be a good television reporter, do you think? I think, Greg, the most important thing is to have a genuine interest in what's going on in the community. Uh, you need to have fairly good contacts. Um, and you need to be able to just work out what are good issues and get to the bottom of it. You often get faced with um, you know, a lot of different things, people telling you different sides of the story. You have to be able to work out what's the real story and then communicate that to the rest of the community. Okay, what are the good points and the bad points of being a journalist on the road? I think the best part of being on the road every day is the amount of different people that you meet. You really learn a lot about living in Canberra, the people that live in it and the issues that are most important to people. Probably one of the most challenging things, of course, is having a six o'clock dead line but I guess also that's uh, one of the better aspects because at the end of the day it's over and the next day is a brand new day. Television news service needs good pictures and that's where the cameramen come in. Let's go and meet one. Sam, uh, what attracted you to making a living out of using a camera? Well what attracted me was uh, every day I've got something different to do. I mean I don't know what I'm going to do until I get into the office and uh, talk to my chief of staff and, and find out what I'm actually doing for that day. One day I could be filming uh, federal politics to the Queen, next day I could be filming um, fatal accidents, uh, all, all sorts of stuff like that. Well obviously there's good points and bad points to every sort of job. Uh, the good points, the bad points. Uh, the good points are, for example, Goodyear Blimp. I got to go up in that um, several months ago and that was quite good fun, sort of uh, throwing around in the blimp and all that sort of stuff. Bad points, uh, fatal accidents, uh, high stress situations, courts, all that sort of stuff. So, Ever been threatened? Uh, not actually physically threatened. I've uh, almost had uh, several punches thrown at me but uh, always managed to dodge them. David, could you just explain the editing process for us? Well, once the cameramen and the journalists get back on station from in their day in the field, the journalist writes their script and they come in to us. Mm -hmm. The first thing we have to do is get their voice on tape. By tape we mean a uh, beta cam tape, something like this. Right. We record, we've got two machines, one's a playback machine, one's a recorder machine. Right. So they go into the booth here, we record their voice, and then we have to construct the, uh, the voice with the grabs, which is talent, which uh, here we've got, uh, say, Bill Stefaniak, they pick their, their grabs, which they want, we put them together and we put the pictures on top of their voice. Okay, well that's, that sounds pretty simple, but that six o'clock deadline, how does that affect you? Well, it's quite a rush in the afternoon from about three, four through to about six o'clock. It can get pretty hefty, the workload, but we have to get it to where at six, you know, no you know, 10 past 6 or whatever, it has to be there at 6 because it's live. When news breaks overseas or elsewhere in Australia, stories are gathered by a news transfer operator and are brought in via one of the many satellite dishes. This is the sports department. Let's meet Matthew Eggins. And after the 10th take, I finally caught it. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> there you go, my good Matthew, friend. thank you. That's uh, it. Big job covering local, national and international sport in one 10-minute sports segment. How do you do it? Well, look, I'm very fortunate. They've, they've put a lot of money into, into 10 Capital Sport over the years, and I actually have about five or six staff under me. And this is a great sign. You've come at a really good time because they're all out on, on jobs at the moment. You can see there's a chair there and a chair there. So I'm in a very fortunate... I'm telling a lie. There's one person in uh, 10 Capital Sport. I've never worked so hard in my life, and uh, I'm counting the days to the next holiday. There's an honest answer. <laughs> OK, but, no, I mean, how do you gather all that sport? For the well, with... Seriously, we're, we're fortunate because we're, we're part of a bigger network and we get to look at the national story, the big national stories of the day. We've got Hansi Cronier today, so we can call on some of our resources in Sydney for that. But on a local angle, we liaise with the local sporting organisations, for example, the Raiders and the Brumbies, and keep up to date with what they're happening. So somehow or other it falls into place. Matthew, you would concede there have been one or two rough nights. All, all right, so he had a bad night. <laughs> one. To surfing now. And just bear with me one moment while I uh, move to uh, my next script. Round three. I beg your pardon, I'm having awful problems here. Just bear with me one moment and I'll uh, put my scripts in the wrong order. I'll try and get the surfing up in just a moment. All right, let's go, let's go back to our surfing story now. <laughs> Things go wrong all the time, uh, in all seriousness. I have found it really helpful having you know, 10 years in radio so that when things go wrong you can just talk your way out of it. But the honest answer is that you really hit the panic button, I can promise you. And certainly at that time, in that particular footage that you just ran, there was a point when the person on the camera left the camera 
and went to the auto kit person and, and, I, and I remember thinking, my goodness, this is not really going to according to plan. So I did hit the panic button slightly, but you try to disguise it anyway. But uh, yeah, it is a bit of a worry, but you've just got to roll with it. And at the end of the day, does it really matter? I'll just confer with our people on the floor. Are we going to the soccer? He shoots and scores! Now for some television magic as I transport myself from the newsroom to the studio. Oh, geez, that was a rough ride. Is my hair all right? This is the studio. This is where we bring you the news each weeknight at six. Now some people think news readers remember 30 or 40 stories a night and present the news that way. Well, I can tell you we don't. This is how we do it. Okay, what you can see behind me are the cameras. Now, in front of the cameras are the auto cues. The words scroll up as we read the scripts. Basically, it's a television set reflecting the words in front of the camera lens. It's that easy. So this is where I read the news. Over there, the weatherman. Okay, so we've looked at most parts of the news operation, but I hear a few people saying, how does weather work? Heard of a chroma key? Well, behind me is a chroma key board. Now, at the moment, as you can see, it looks pretty bland and pretty blue. But with the, the help of the guys upstairs in the control room, what we do is electronically key vision over the chroma key board like this. There you go. Now, that, of course, is a map of Australia. And each night, I'll talk about temperatures in Brisbane. There it is. Sydney. Uh, Melbourne. Adelaide. And, of course, back here is Perth. But if you take the screen off and it goes back to the blue, there's nothing there. So how do I work with just a blue screen? And even though it looks a little strange there, that of course is a television monitor and that's the trick to the trade. You see, what I do is I'll stand back here and you'll point to temperatures, but you're using that monitor to help you out in finding all the bits and pieces around the country in synoptic charts and prognostic charts. It's a chroma key system, works very well, has done for a lot of years, and that's how we do the weather here at 10 Capital. Presenters are prepared by a professional makeup artist, groomed to look neat and tidy. When the news goes to air, our director is controlling everything you see at home, with more than a thousand different buttons to choose from. So, as you've seen, it's one big team working together to bring you the best news you'll get all day. And that's 10 Capital News for this Wednesday. Thanks for your company. Enjoy your evening. <laughs>